It's going to be another high tech presentation. Hello. Hi. How are you? Fine. Um, yeah. Okay. You're you're coming through here to California, loud and clear. Um, if you want to, there you go. Share your screen. Okay. Let's kill the feedback loop. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Oh, you're you're streaming us back. That's right. <laughs> the infinite loop. Um, okay. Okay. There we'll is just... a Say that again, please. Uh, can you see it? Can you hear it? Yep. I think you're coming through loud and clear. Wow. That's a lot of demos for 20 minutes. <laughs> but um, speaking of demos, like I think your demos I, are pretty well known to the people in this room. Um, so where are you actually talking to us from? I am uh, talking from Slovakia. Uh -huh. Nine hours time different. It, it's a uh, late evening here. <laughs> there you go. Well, thanks for staying up first. Maybe you are, hopefully you're a night owl anyway. Yeah, yeah. So, people. so oh. there you go. Something funky happened. Yeah, something just died. Oh, wow. I, I will try to restart the, restart the sharing. Okay. Well, you actually, you uh, yeah, we can still see you're sharing. It more looked like your slide died or something. So if you go uh, full screen on your slide again, then you're probably in pretty good shape. Yes. You just have to, it's open office and it seems like it has uh, troubles. Okay, is it? There you go. Okay. Okay, so um, I don't know how you, I learned on Skype that you're actually called Branislav, but I always just thought that your name was like Altered Quelia. But um, I've been following your stuff on Twitter for a while. And uh, so you are with, um, I guess it's fair to call you one of the main people behind 3JS and uh, which is the library that's seeing a lot of traction right now. And I think yes. you have a, you have a big hand in that and a bunch of great demos. So I'm just going to stop talking and leave it to you. Take it away. Okay. So yeah, you have seen my site and I'm also sometimes hanging on Twitter and on GitHub. And today I'm going to be speaking about 3JS, the library to which I'm contributing and also a little bit about the ROM. Which, which is, uh, I ate my own dog food and I was team member uh, in the Project Rome, which was uh, using 3JS as, as a 3D engine. 3JS is a library for creating 3D graphics uh, in browsers. Uh, it's not just WebGL, it actually started as a canvas uh, library and there are also some rudimentary SVG and DOM renderers, but uh, since some time it's, it's mostly about WebGL. It's written in JavaScript uh, and some tools are in Python. It's open source and licensed under MIT license and it lives on a GitHub. It started about a year ago by one and only Mr. Doop and we uh, went quite far from um, there. Uh, you can see this is the state of the WebGL in uh, 3JS that was about eight months ago in October 2010. And actually, it was even worse because there was some bug in the shading and there were no lines. And currently, we have almost 30 contributors. Uh, there are commits coming almost every day. Whole library is more than 23,000 lines of code, which seems like quite a lot. But uh, if you minify and gzip, it's, it's the size of a, one simple image. So it's not so bad to add it to your projects to be getting a lot of functionalities. At the core of the library are examples. We have a lot of examples. It's more than 100 examples, and most of them are about WebGL. Uh, 3JS is uh, battery included. Uh, everything what you need, you, you download uh, one uh, zip file from, from GitHub, or, or you clone the repository, and it's about 50 megabytes. There are no external dependencies. Uh, all data that are needed for the examples are included. And you don't need a server to, to run them, uh, just for some examples which uh, load uh, data via Ajax calls. You need to run uh, browsers with a special flag, so uh, they don't use the security restrictions. Uh, what's inside? We have our own math library, which is uh, quite fast. Uh, we have sets of the geometries and objects which use these geometries. We have quite uh, extensive material systems, uh, different types of lights, different cameras, uh, small library of the custom shaders, cohesion systems. We have some proto 3D sound system 
plants, flares, uh, shadows, and things are coming in every day. Um, how does uh, 3JS application looks like? Uh, here you'll see here how to create a simple 3D object. Uh, this is uh, this is actually the whole program. That, that's uh, if, if if you run it, it's just some HTML around this, and and this is what will create the um, sphere. Uh, you render a scene using the cameras, uh, and uh, you create a scene to which you add the mesh, and mesh is uh, composed of the geometry, which is procedurally generated sphere, and some default material, which for which we just set the color. We add it to the scene, and we can render, and that's what you will be getting. Um, 3JS uh, contains a library of uh, procedural uh, shapes of various complexities, uh, starting from the simple things like planes, cubes, uh, spheres, up to the very recent addition of the very cool uh, 3D uh, text uh, primitives, which is which is created from the true type fonts, uh, which are uh, triangulated and tessellated. Geometries are corresponding roughly to the vertex buffer objects in the WebGL. Uh, what is uh, required are vertices, and then there are optional attributes uh, like normals, colors, UVs, tangents, uh, uh, weights for skinning, uh, and also uh, geometries can contain uh, topology information for the vertices as, as the faces. Uh, uh, 3JS supports triangles and quads. Uh, when we uh, geometries are being used inside objects, which objects are basically geometries plus transforms and uh, possibly materials. Uh, objects can share uh, geometries and materials. Uh, objects can be parts of the hierarchy. We have different types of uh, objects. Uh, most uh, used ones are probably meshes. We use uh, geo triangles primitives for rendering. Uh, we can handle uh, meshes that are larger by automatically splitting them into uh, smaller chunks uh, using uh, indexed uh, draw elements uh, calls. But the less. Hi, are you hearing me? Um, I guess that's hard for you to say. There you go. Bam. His, well, his hacker names are Alter Quelia, and his first name is like Branislav, and I forget what his last name is, actually. But um, let's see if he comes back. Good for me about joking about that European internet, huh? <laughs> There you go. Pull my foot out of my mouth again. See, he still looks online, so we may have a Skype moment. Once we post process these videos, it's like it never would have happened. Oh, Skype crashed. That sucks. Microsoft. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now you can blame Microsoft. <laughs> Aiden have built Hello. this piece of. Yep. Hi. My Skype crashed, so let's try again. <laughs> oh, no. uh, Eight and a half billion, huh? Okay, can you see? Can you hear? Yep, you're coming through loud and clear, just as you were. Okay, so let's continue. I don't know for how long time I was speaking to the empty ether, but we, we can just, just move forward. Uh, another type of the objects are lines, which can be, depending on the parameters of the objects, can be either continuous lines or sequences of the, of the individual lines. Uh, Another type of the, the objects supported by 3JS are particles, which are using GL points primitives. However, if you have been working with GL points, you know that there are some troubles. With them, for example, depending on your GPU, uh, sizes are limited. Also, there is troubles with, uh, with the clipping on the sides of the screen. So there is also another type of the, of the similar uh, object, uh, which we call sprites, which are using uh, geo triangles. Uh, to emulate the points. 
A special type of the objects are level of detail objects, which can switch uh, other types of the objects depending on the distance from the camera. A uh, big part of the 3JS is a uh, materials library. We have a uh, 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 some standard materials uh, with uh, different types of the lightning and different costs and different complexities. Uh, our standard materials are constructed uh, programmatically from the chunks of the shaders, depending on which features they are using. And uh, uh, pro uh, shader programs are automatically shared uh, between different materials. If the same, uh, if the material can reuse the same shader program, then uh, it's going to be detected, and uh, you are not going to be compiling a new shader because this is something that is costly. Uh, here are some features for the uh, materials. Uh, each of the default uh, materials get a different types of the shading. It can be uh, wireframe. You can have a textures, light maps, uh, cube maps that can be either uh, used for reflection or refraction, uh, different types of the fog, and it supports uh, animation via skinning and morphing uh, both on the vertex shaders. Uh, another feature is supported are vertex colors, which can be either per vertex or per face use of the vertex, so then you can have a sharp boundaries on the, on the edges of the faces. Uh, however, if uh, these uh, standard materials are not enough for you. You have the option how to inject your own code uh, via customizable mesh shader material where you provide your own vertex fragment shaders. You can define your own uniforms and custom attributes. Uh, this is uh, quite powerful. For example, you can uh, use it to create uh, nice effects like a, uh, normal mapping or make more complex uh, lightning effects like Fresno shader. Another part of the 3JS Oh man, I knew I should have brought my banjo down today so I could have maybe it was coming back. Did I just say no? That wasn't my intention. Hi there. Hello. You, Sky, this, this is not handling this, this very I know. well. <laughs> I know, I know. We need uh -huh. some uh, we need some video streaming capability inside um, inside your system, so we don't have to rely on anything else. Look at that guy. Okay, take it away. <laughs> okay, so when you when you render, you don't necessarily have to render to the screen. You can also render to the frame buffer objects. And this is uh, nice to be able to do some things like post-processing or some more complex effects like uh, depth of field. Uh, of course, you are not uh, dependent just on the procedural uh, uh, primitives. Uh, any sufficiently complex uh, project will need uh, art assets that are created outside of the, of the library. So for this, uh, we have a data format. Uh, we found that uh, JSON is, is, is pretty nice to be working with. It's, it's very flexible. Actually, at the beginning, I was trying to be doing binary format, but uh, it's, it's such a pain to work with. And, and the gains, what you are getting uh, after you gzip your content are not so big. So uh, we still have uh, support for binary format, but uh, most of the new features are coming just to the ASCII JSON. We use uh, our... our, our Models are not just uh, simple uh, JSONs. It's, it's they are actually web workers, and we came to this uh, because uh, they have been troubles with the uh, uh, loading of the of the large uh, JavaScript files, uh, and it, it helped a little bit with with uh, UI thread freezing and this crashing of the browser, especially at, at the beginning when we have been starting a few months ago. Uh, browsers were much worse in, in handling of the large JavaScript files. Uh, our asset pipeline uh, currently, we have been trying many different uh, ways, but what, what's currently maintained is, is a command line um, Python converter for OBG files, uh, Blender exporter, which exports individual models and scene files, and then quite rudimentary 3ds Max exporter. Uh, documentation is uh, quite sparse, but, but it's slowly growing. Fortunately, we are blessed with a great community and Paul Lewis, uh, so known as Arrow Twist, started 
series of, of great uh, articles uh, which help you start with 3JS. Now I will use the opportunity to show some of the uh, demos that have been created uh, by our community. Some great uh, and unexpected uses of, of uh, 3JS for both serious and fun applications. I, I don't know how it's, it's good to be showing uh, live uh, videos, uh, live 3D applications. I, I was seeing the previous presentations and frame rates were, were quite bad, so oh, maybe for some demos. Um, a very diverse uh, type of applications that are being created with the 3JS. Uh, now I switch to, to Rome, which is probably the most complex uh, project that was done with uh, 3JS. It's an uh, interactive uh, music video directed by Chris Milk. It's for a track uh, called Black from the Rome album. Mm, Rome is an uh, open source project uh, with assets that are licensed uh, as a creative common license. Uh, it has uh, different uh, <clears throat> elements. Uh, start with a, a live video that is uh, played back through uh, WebGL. Uh, it followed by uh, 2D animations where we uh, layer multiple videos uh, which are parallaxed uh, one over each other and there is some uh, vertex shader deformations applied over some parts of the video. And finally there are 3D sequences where you go through three different worlds. And uh, the experience is, is not closed. Uh, the users, after they, they pray through the experience, they have the option to create their own uh, 3D models, which are then being included into the last uh, world. And the others can uh, vote on them. And the ones that get most votes are going to be shown in the actual experience. Big part of the um, experience are videos. Uh, here uh, we discovered that uh, playing one video is, is okay, but once you start to be having more of them, you are going to be having troubles with the texture memory bandwidth. And we have been trying to experiment with a lot of parameters, and we found out that because uh, Every pixel has the same cost for the for the memory transfer. It's better to be having better uh, pixels than than uh, less of, of the better pixels than more of the ugly pixels. So it's good to be having smaller videos which are using higher uh, quality compressions. Also, uh, despite WebGL uh, supporting uh, uh, textures that are not uh, power of two, it's it's good for the performance to be having uh, textures that are uh, with a resolution of power of two. And also because usually animations, uh, these are hand-drawn animations, so every frame is, is, is a pain to, to draw. So they are not being drawn at 60 frames per second. So it doesn't make sense to, to play them back at the 60 frames per second. So we have been trying to reduce the refresh rate for the videos. Uh, one of the problems that we encountered was uh, in order to be having more complex uh, video playback, we needed to have transparency in the videos. However, uh, uh, current uh, HTML5 videos don't support uh, transparency, so we had to uh, work around this. Uh, we have been uh, creating videos in the special uh, format and then uh, reconstructing transparency in the pixel shaders. Uh, different shots use a uh, different type of the transparency. Some of the videos are using chroma key transparencies where either black or white is being keyed out. And some videos for which we needed to have a semi-transparent parts, they are using alpha uh, channel part of the video where, where here you can see on the bottom, uh, it's it's being uh, uh, the whole video is being split and then it's being reconstructed uh, alpha channel uh, in the shader based on the grayscale values in the, in the part of the video. Uh, for 3D words, uh, we went with a low poly look, uh, with the flat shadings. Mm. 
each uh, word is uh, constructed in a little bit uh, different way. Uh, a big part of the look uh, for the words are uh, vertex colors, but the uh, final look is, is achieved by uh, custom shaders uh, and there is also some post-processing going on. <clears throat> First word was, was uh, city, where uh, we started uh, with different approaches. Uh, I think our, our first uh, model was uh, something like 22 megabytes uh, JSON exported from 3ds Max, and we had at some point uh, able to reduce it by using instances to about 200 Ks. Um, but uh, finally, we didn't end up using this particular version. We used uh, somehow bigger version, about one megabyte, because we have been baking uh, global uh, illumination into the vertex colors. So this, this, this was not possible to be done with, uh, with the instances. Uh, Prairie is uh, done uh, uh, the base of, of, of the of the environment, the, the ground and the and the mountains are in standard meshes and trees and houses and cars are done as, as instances. Uh, dunes is is, is uh, more. Uh, particular because uh, uh, first two words had fixed camera path so they have been basically whatever came out of the 3d modeling package uh, we just translated it into 3d uh, webgl but here uh, this is a never-ending uh, word so we have a series of tiles which are being uh, uh, reshuffled uh, to be creating the never-ending experience when you fly around, free fly, uh, Dune's world. Hmm. Main actor of the uh, Rome uh, is what we call soup. It's a polygonal geometry which is being placed in the 3D world uh, based on where the user looks around. Uh, for this, uh, we have been experimenting with uh, different uh, types of the animations. We did uh, at the beginning. Uh, we use uh, uh, bones and uh, skinning, but this proved to be problematic. Uh, uh, asset pipeline was was uh, quite complicated, and also we had a requirement to be able to morph between different types of animals, which uh, would be too difficult to be doing with the bones. So finally, we switched to very simple uh, format where. Uh, we have a sequence of OVG files for each frame of the animation, and then they are being interpolated uh, in the vertex shader. Another part of the soup uh, are polygonal objects, which are just static objects which are being placed uh, on the environment uh, based on um, checking of the ray and checking uh, the normals where the ray hits the triangle. I will try to show demo of some of the animals. Uh, this is not uh, actually from the ROM. This was done post ROM. Uh, I tried to be to be putting them in in more spotlight because uh, whole ROM is like three and a half minutes and and 3D scenes are, are so much thing is going on. You are not even able to to notice how how crazy cool these animals are. A lot of uh, work, would, all of what you are seeing, it's, it's not actually uh, the code. Uh, the artists from Mirada did a great job how to achieve uh, very nice uh, looking models, animations with, with very low uh, polygon count. I think they are starting like from 500 to maximum 1000 polygons per each animal. Uh, soup come from, uh, come in, in a, Two variations. Uh, one is uh, uh, live soup, and another one is uh, dark soup. Uh, when you go in the city, you are spraying the life, and when you are going in the prairie, you are uh, spreading the darkness. So this is example of of the, of the dark soup. Let's go back. Some of the of the animals, uh, well, animals of the, of the creatures didn't make it into Rome. It was hard to um, incorporate them into the 
the soup that was uh, it was following the uh, path of the camera. Uh, however, some some pretty nice models have been created, and you can see them here. Uh, uh, assets have been uh, created uh, in uh, 3ds Max and Maya. Uh, scenes have been composited in Blender. We added some custom properties to the Blender. Blender proved to be to be great to to do asset pipeline with. It's everything is accessible via Python API, and you you can bend it to your to your wishes. Also, Python was generally very useful for messaging the data and. <clears throat> Uh, other part of the of the asset pipeline was uh, we have been uh, using. Uh, I will try to to run it. Uh, uh, asset viewer. Uh, it was using uh, even more uh, bleeding edge uh, HTML5 feature than 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 WebGL, and at some point it was working and it was not working. It was using file file API and blobs. Uh, uh, where you create uh, web workers on the some procedurally generated internal URLs, uh, we have been using uh, so that you could be doing things like um, drag and dropping uh, models. Uh, here you here you get the animal. It was very useful. We we send the URL to the viewer to our partners which have been creating assets and they have been able to to test their models uh, without uh, going through us it's it's a really nice way how to be developing applications now with uh, another thing what you could be doing here I'm going to try to have some Mm. Pre-initialized uh, viewer with a with Can a model just, of the city. I'm sorry to jump in. Is yeah. I have no visual contact with you. You're sort of getting you're butching up against the end of uh, the time here. So if you could take like okay. another minute or something. Yeah, I have, this is never-ending topic. This is so so no, sorry. It's, it's it's good <laughs> stuff too. So I'm I'm sorry to have to do this, but I'm a bit of a time Nazi. Sorry. Sure, sure. You, you, can, you can ask questions, and I can then explain more. Of, if, if you, if Actually, you let's, let's do that. Let's take, let's take a single question, and then I think we'll uh, we'll wrap it up if that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, luckily, you're a guy who's also very good about sharing your work, so I'm I'm following you on Twitter with great interest already. Hi, Dan Miller here from uh, Catalabs. Uh, I was just wondering if you could uh, talk a little bit more about the the animation and specifically, are you actually streaming animation information, or is that just brought in as a JSON blob? Uh, everything is uh, JSON. It's it's actually pretty simple. If you uh, let's uh, this one that we have been having here, if we open this, uh, I don't know. Are you able to to see? I will try to make the fonts bigger. So you have just a list of the vertex positions for each animation frames, and they are being loaded at the at the beginning of the of the of the demo, and then they are just being played back. It's 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 quite uh, efficient. They, they are they are not so big like like for a whole uh, for all animals that you have been seeing there. Let's see how big it is altogether. Are uh, about nine megabytes, which are not compressed. If, if you jizz it, it's going to be like one third of this. And this is not even properly optimized. Some of the um, animations, they have like 60 frames per second, and they, they could be even much smaller because you could be dropping some, some frames because they are interpolated in the shader. Very nice. I think we're going to say thank you here. So let's give him a round of applause. <laughs>